In just a moment, Suspense with Burt Lancaster. You just sit down and make yourself at home, Doc. Mary! Yes? Hey, look who's here, Doc Lewis. Oh, my goodness, who's sick? Oh, golly. Can't a poor doctor make a simple social visit like ordinary folks? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I just finished my last call, so I stopped by to a steel haps easy chair, relax, and listen to the Auto Light Suspense well, Show. sit right down. My car and I have had a tough day. We have to keep in shape, too, you know. I suppose you've got a surefire prescription for keeping your car in shape, Doc. Oh, you bet. Auto light resistor spark plugs, auto light batteries, and auto light ignition systems. I wish every case was as easy as that one. Well, you sound like Frank Martin. Is your prescription for tired doctors the auto light suspense show? Uh, right again. <laughs> uh, let's listen. Suspense. Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations bring you radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Starring tonight, Mr. Burt Lancaster in Anton Leder's production of The Big Shot by Brett Halliday. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. You gotta be tough to be a big shot. Especially when you're cursed with yellow curly hair and a pretty baby face. I learned about that early, when I was a kid. And the other kids started razzing. I learned that if you bounced a brick off somebody's head, the razzing stopped. And you were somebody. It was a very profitable lesson. Which paid off as I grew up. And I found it pays dividends whether you're on East 10th Street or down in Mexico. Morton! Charlie Morton! Yeah? Yeah. Well, welcome to Mexico. Well, thanks. You're Quinn, I suppose. Right. Glad to meet you. Same here. Well, it's lucky you were the only American on the bus or I'd never have recognized you. No? No. Collins wrote he was sending a young fellow out just from engineering school, but I didn't expect to... Listen, Quinn. Never mind my looks. You asked for a mining engineer and you got one. Any complaints? Why, well, of course... Well, if there are, you can pay me off my guarantee and I'll get back on that bus. Now, wait a minute, Morton. I didn't mean to offend you. I got no complaints as long as you can do the job. I can do the job. Yes, I guess maybe you can. Now, how about a drink? Sure, right over here at the corner. In Mexico, there's always a bottle of tequila not too far away. That's one thing makes it attractive. Must be the only thing, then. Oh, I don't know. Some of us like it down here. <laughs> Is that so? Why'd you come, then? Well, that's easy. They told me there was money in it. Yeah. Yeah, there is. In here. Bienvenidos, señores. ¿Qué quieren ustedes? Dos tequilas, por favor. Dos tequilas, sí. I hope you like tequila, Morton. It's about all they have around here. It'll do. Are all the bartenders like that? No, no, that's Lolita. Her father owns a place. Oh. Sure to be plenty good for business. <laughs> I guess so. Say your stuff has all arrived. Last box of equipment came in last night, so you can start setting up the mill as soon as we get back. Don't worry, I'll get it up. I'm not worried, but time is important. Dos tequillas, señores. Si, gracias, Lolita. Yeah, thanks, beautiful. Beautiful? Si, baby, that's you. From top to bottom. It's okay, senor? It's plenty okay, baby. Plenty. Gracias, senor. Well. Gracias. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to like Mexico after all. Look, Martin, I don't know how much Collins told you about the setup. Not much. Said there was a chance for some money and... Plus a little excitement. He didn't tell you there might be more than excitement. Jail, maybe, or worse. He mentioned it. Oh. Okay, then. You understand that we've got a tip ticklish proposition on our hands. We've got to be careful. Especially with these people. <laughs> if they knew what we were planning. Okay, what are we planning? We struck a rich vein of gold quartz in the remote mountains about 20 miles from here. I've got my crew mining as fast as we can before anybody around here finds out about it. So? The tough part comes in getting it out of the country. There's a wave of Mexico for Mexicans right now, and if we haul the ore out to the regular stamping mill in town, the government will confiscate most of the gold. I see. So you bring me in to set up a small stamping mill at the mine and mill the ore there? Huh? Right. We figure that in the next month we can sluice out maybe a half million dollars worth of free gold, then get out quick before anybody gets wise. Half a million dollars? Yes, but we'll still have to smuggle it out of the country. 
It's going to be a tough job. <laughs> Kid stuff. Yeah? It's not just the law we've got to worry about. Well, what else? Lolita? Sure. These people would inform on us if they found out. But they wouldn't tell the government. They'd tell some bandit gang around in the hills somewhere. <laughs> Bandits. I suppose they got a Robin Hood down here, too. Okay, Morton. Maybe you'll learn. Well, I thought a half a million would tempt anybody. And a twentieth of that is your share. Maybe 25,000. That's not hay. Senores. Careful, Morton. Senores. Quieren ustedes otra bebida? No, no, gracias. Quanto? Un beso. Gracias, senores. Hey, Lolita. Si, sí, senor. You understand, uh, comprende English? Si, sí, senor. I speak English muy good. <laughs> oh, so I see. Never mind, baby. A little is enough. Your old man ever give you any time off? Que, sí, senor? No comprendo. Well, let's put it another way. Are you doing anything Saturday night? Wait a minute, Morton. Better not make any dates. Well, why not? The guy can't work all the time, especially with stuff like this around. You don't expect me to stay up there... Hey, quiet, you fool. Okay. Never mind, beautiful. See you later. Comprende? Si, sí, senor. See you later. Yeah, you get the idea. Hasta luego. Look, Morton, I warned you. Be careful. I'm a big boy. I can take care of myself and her. Just remember, there's a half a million involved. Yeah, half a million. Maybe, all together, for the company. 25,000 for you. Half a million dollars. Listen, Morton. And 25,000 for me. That's not enough for you? It'll do for a start. You think you're a pretty big shot, don't you, Morton? And you don't like it, is that it? I don't like you. That bus is still out there. And you could get another engineer down here in maybe six weeks. Something tells me I ought to take you up on that, but I don't have to like you. As long as you do your job and stay out of trouble. Okay, then let's leave it at that. Whatever happens, it won't be me who'll have any regrets. The setup was just like Quinn said. Except that the ore was even richer than I'd expected. There was a pile of it already mined, and I put them into work right away assembling the stamping mill. You know, hard rock miners are funny. They hate being bossed by an engineer who's learned all his mining out of books. And they didn't like it either that I was getting a bigger share than it than they were. And of course, to add that, my looks, the yellow hair, and the baby face. I knew that sooner or later I'd have to show them that they couldn't draw any wrong conclusions from my face. Well, it didn't take long for the showdown to come. Come on, Hank, let's knock off. Charles, ready. Okay. Wait a minute, Logan. Yeah? That sluice is not tight. You better get down there and tighten up those bolts. It can wait till tomorrow. Chow's ready. I said get down there and tighten up those bolts. Who's gonna make me? A dude engineer? I am. Why, you measly little... Yeah, but you're not tough enough. Look out, little man. Watch me. Me, will you? Oh, Look out. Look out. You're too close to the alley. Morton, look out. Morton, you knocked him over the cliff. He went down on the gully. I saw him. Hurry up. Get down there, man. He's probably hurt bad. Must have fallen 30 feet. Morton, where are you going? Somebody said supper was ready. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to knock him over the cliff. Yeah, well, I asked for it. But you didn't have to fight like that? Like you meant to kill him? They wouldn't take orders. And I had to show him. Okay, Morton. Quinn! Hey, Quinn! Yeah? He, he's dead. His neck's broke. So, you got to show us all how tough you are, don't you, Morton? Even if it amounts to murder. Nobody else wants any supper, I do. I'm hungry. For suspense, Autolite is bringing you Mr. Burt Lancaster in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. I wouldn't call suspense very relaxing, Dr. Lewis. <laughs> well, suspense is certainly no sedative, Mary, but I like it that way, full of ginger. Oh, like those Autolite's resistor spark plugs you mentioned, hey, Doc? Now, say, Hap, don't you get me started on those Autolite resistors, because I'm a bug on them. <laughs> I guess it's pretty important that you doctors have spark plugs that you can really depend on, huh? Right as rain, Hap. You know, my patients just can't wait. They expect me to be Johnny on the spot, day or night, fair weather or foul. Yes, folks, come rain or shine, Autolite resistor spark plugs are just what the doctor ordered for your car. 
And right now, you can get Autolite resistor spark plugs anywhere in the United States, and they're sensational. Why, no other spark plugs can give and maintain such performance. Autolite ignition engineered a 10,000 ohm resistor right into the Autolite spark plugs. This permits a wider gap setting and maintains it far longer than any other spark plugs. Replace your narrow gap spark plugs with a set of wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. You can actually tell the difference in your car. Autolite resistor spark plugs are a great new development of Autolite ignition engineers. Autolite engineers, tests, and produces complete ignition systems. That's why Autolite spark plugs work in special harmony with your car's entire electrical system. Get a set of Autolite resistor spark plugs right away. And now Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Burt Lancaster as Charles Morton in The Big Shot, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. You gotta be tough. It's a tough world. And you gotta be tougher than the next guy. I was tougher than Joe Logan, that's all. I beat him in a fair fight. If he slipped and fell over that cliff, well, it's just too bad. While they buried him, I ate my supper. After that, I had no more trouble with the men. The first Saturday that everything was running smoothly, I went up to Quinn's tent. Quinn! Yeah? Oh, come in, Morton. I was just looking over the take so far. What's your guess? Mm, maybe 100,000? Yes, maybe. We'll pull at least 250. We'll get that half a million. Don't you worry. If nobody bothers us. Ah, don't be so jumpy. Nobody's going to bother us. I uh, hope not. Say, Morton, I got to admit you've done a whale of a job so far. Forget it. Don't worry, Morton. I don't like you any better. But I can appreciate it when a man knows his job and does it well. Okay, okay. Look, I'm going into town. You want any supplies? I'm sending Andy in for him. Well, there's no use of the two of us going. Morton, I'm the boss here. Are you? Yes. You told me as long as I did the job, that was all you cared about. That's right. Okay, I've done the job. It'll take the crew two days to catch up. I'm going to town. I'll tell Andy you'll get the supplies. Si, si, baby. <laughs> Come in. Oh, senor Charm. Mm. <sighs> Love me, baby. Oh, Pero, si, querido. I have never met one like you. Yeah, that goes double, baby. You're sensational. You'd knock them dead in the States. I'd like to take you back there. I'd like to dress you up in fancy clothes with diamonds in your hair. Diamonds? Oh, senor, you must be very rich. Not yet, not yet, but give me time. It's very interesting. Tell me more, querido. Later, baby, later. Right now, let's blow this joint. But, senor Charlie, is it not you must go back to wherever you go? Ah, they can do without me for a while. I like it here better. Okay? <laughs> okay, senor. <laughs> Vaya, vaya, andale! <laughs> well, what was that? What'd the kid say? It's nothing, Senor Charlie. It's a game they play. Well, what'd he say? He say, beware El Chico. Oh, who's El Chico? It's nobody, Senor. You must not mind. Sounds like a Mexican goblin or something. <laughs> El Chico is, uh, they say, a bandido. He not like Americanos. He rob, kill them. <laughs> they see me with Americano, they say, beware El Chico. It's a game. I get it. He's the Mexican equivalent of Superman, eh? An imaginary Robin Hood in a sombrero. Oh, no comprendo, senor. Well, never mind, baby. Forget the fairy tales. That kid ought to be home in bed anyway instead of running around a saloon. He's my little brother. Oh, I get it now. This is the family game to scare off the Americanos, eh? No, no, senor. <laughs> well, I don't scare easily, baby. I don't scare at all. Ah, bueno. Uh, no, sorry, I... Say. Okay. What is the matter, Senor Charlie? Nothing, baby, nothing. I just had a great idea, that's all. Thank your little brother for me, baby. He's just given me a great idea. Yeah, a great idea. For a long time I've been thinking, why just 25,000? 
Why not the whole half a million? There's something wonderful about those little bags of free gold, you know? They're so negotiable. You don't have to exchange them for anything else before you can get the cash. With a half a million and... and Lolita, life could be beautiful. And now the plan was shaping up in my mind. I started putting it into effect as soon as I got back to the camp. Quinn was waiting there for me as I rode up, and I could see he was boiling. Where in thunder have you been? You were due back two days ago. Ah, I got drunk. I didn't feel like hitting the trail this morning. Oh, just like that. Take it or leave it. Well, that's it. I don't blame a man for getting drunk. Once. But I'll send somebody else in for supplies next week. I'm going in. I got a date next Saturday night. Listen, Morton, I told you... You want to fire me now? Huh? You got anybody else that can keep the mill going? I haven't, and you know it. All right, then. Let's get to work. Morton. Uh, Maybe we better speed up a little, too. Why? Well, they're talking in town about this this El Chico. El Chico? Yeah, a bandit who thinks he's going to run all the Americanos out of Mexico. He's making war on the Americans. Been raising cane up north. Up north? Yeah. The talk in town was that he's uh, heading down this way. I was afraid of something like that. You better tell me about it, Morton. Tell me all about it. It was a cinch. From the very first, he swallowed it all. By the next Saturday, he was begging me to go back to town. Keep my ears open. Find out all I could. Of course, I heard plenty. Then Quinn was hurrying the men, trying to figure out a way we could get out. But the way I told them, El Chico had complete control of the province to the north and blocked our way back to the States. The only other way was across the mountains to the west, and they were impassable without native guides. Now, he knew that, but I reminded him. And then the next time I went into town, I brought back the map. A greasy, crumpled, dog-eared pencil map, scrawled on butcher paper. It was a masterpiece. It should have been. It took me a whole night to draw it. And it showed an old wagon road going out over the mountains to the coast. I told Quinn I bought it from an old Mexican. It was the prelude for my trump card. Okay. The map looks genuine, all right. And if it is, that road can't be more than ten miles due west of here. Well, I figure less than that. Straight over there in that low pass. My golly, I think you're right. Sure. All we got to do is to get across this one, this this one canyon right here. And how do you figure we do that? With wings? It's 300 feet deep and 100 wide. No, it's easy. Yeah? That tequila you've been swilling in town's got you goofy. Well, why not throw a bridge across? I love the way you say that. Like, why not have another flapjack for breakfast? Look, I'm an engineer, remember? I'll put a bridge across there in three days. Morton, you do that and I'll take back everything I ever said about you. <laughs> The next morning, I tied a 200-foot length of rope around my waist, took a pulley with me, and started down to the bottom. It took me all day to make it up to the other side. I tied the pulley to a jack pine and pulled the rope through tight and tied it off. And then I came back hand over hand. After that, it was simple to finish the slicker suspension bridge you ever laid eyes on. Plenty strong enough to hold all our men and mules, fully loaded. It was so good that even Quinn had the grace to admit it. I got to hand it to you, Morton. I've seen a lot of engineers that can work things out on paper, but not many that can do the job themselves. Thanks. What do you say we take a look over there tomorrow for that road? No need to. I took a little walk the day I ran the cable across. The road's there, all right. Just where the map shows it. Oh. All right, if you found it, I guess that takes care of that. Sure, we're all set. Thanks to you. I guess I owe you an apology, Morton. Maybe we all owe our lives to you. That's the only time before or after that I had a qualm when he said that. But you gotta be tough. I couldn't forget that. It was too late now to back out. Everything was ready. We were all set to leave on short notice. Quinn wrote a letter to Collins in the States, telling him to meet us on the coast with a boat. Quinn gave me the letter to mail in town. But of course, I never mailed it. I spent my time in town getting the necessary mules and the gear. And then I went to Lolita. Querido mio... I have missed you. Well, it's the last time you'll have to miss me, baby. This is it. The diamonds, the fancy clothes, all of it. Yours. Mine? Querido, you are rich now? By this time tomorrow, we'll both be rich. With more gold than we'll know what to do with for the rest of our lives. Gold? You have found much gold? See, si, and it's ours, thanks to El Chico. El Chico? What? Remember Beware, El Chico, the game you played with your brother? Oh, see. Si. Well, that's what gave me the idea, and it worked perfectly. <laughs> we'll have to thank El Chico if we ever run into him. Oh, I do not think that will happen. After all, El Chico is only in a game, remember? Well, never mind the games now, baby. we got work to do. Now, get some clothes, but keep it light. We'll pull out of here at midnight. And tomorrow... 
Tomorrow we're rich. Oh, there. Alto. We are here already, Carido. No, but, but you stay here with the mules while I go into camp with Quinn's train. It'll be dawn in an hour, then you start up. See. Si. And remember, raise as much dust as you can. That's part of the plan. See. Si. By the time you get there, everything will be ready. Comprende? Si, si, querido. You are sure there will be no mistake? Not with me running this clam bake, honey. Now give me a kiss. Mm. That a girl. Hasta la wega, baby. Good luck, querido. But I wasn't depending on luck. You don't need luck when you got everything figured. By noon, the leader and I'd be on our way back to the States with a trunk full of that yellow stuff. And the men? Well, I didn't even give them a thought. Not even Quinn. Dumb lugs. Too stupid to reach for what they wanted. They deserved whatever life handed them. Just before I rounded the last bend into camp, I stopped the pack. It's awful quiet in the mountains just before dawn. I took a deep breath and... Quinn! Quinn! Get going, you mangy cusses. Try to look like you've been running for 20 miles. Quinn! No, Quinn! Who is it? Martin, is that you? What is it? What's the matter? Alta! Ah. We'll have to get out in a hurry. Our chief goes on his way here with 20 men. He'll be here inside of two hours. How'd he find out about us? Oh, it's all my fault. I was a fool to trust Lolita. I thought she was okay. She sent word to old Chico about the gold. You blasted idiot. I told you to keep your mouth shut. I know, I know. You can kick me anywhere. I've been kicking myself all the way up here. I'd like to kill you. Well, I wouldn't blame you, Quinn. All right, men, get those mules back. We're getting out. The gold first. Two saddlebags for each mule. I worked like a demon alongside the men, getting the stuff packed. And then, just as the last mule was getting his diamond hitch, I grabbed Quinn's arm. What do you want? Quinn, I've been thinking. I've got to do something. Looks to me like you've done enough. I don't you see? It's my fault. It's up to me to do something now. This is no time to beat your breast. We're getting out. Getting out of here as fast as we can. No, no look. Look, I got an idea. You gotta let me square myself. Make it snappy. We can't waste time. Well, listen. I placed a dynamite charge under the eye bolts at this side of the bridge. Uh-huh. Now, I'll stay on this side and wait till you're safely across. Then blow the bolts clean so there'll be no trace left. I see. You cut the cables on the other side with a hacksaw, and the whole bridge will drop to the bottom where the brush will hide it. You'll be out of sight when El Chico comes. And I'll tell him you've outslicked him, gone north. He'll wait several days riding after you before he realizes the truth. And by that time, you'll be safe on the coast. What about you? Well, I don't matter. This wouldn't have happened if I had shot my mouth off. Come on, you fellas get going. Nuts, we'll stick together. Cutting the cables on the far side's a good idea. He'll lose a day going back to where he can cross the but canyon. A day is not enough. His horses will catch your moves. We gotta destroy every sign of the bridge. Make him think you've gone the other way. I'm staying. I don't know. It's the only way, Quinn. Look. Look. You can see the dust cloud over there on the trail. He's coming. You haven't got much time to get out of sight. All right, Martin. Maybe I was wrong about you. Let me shake your hand. Good luck. Good luck. That's all guys like Quinn can think about. They don't understand a man who's tough enough to make his own luck. All of them lined up and they shook my hand. They all hated me since I came on the job. Now they were shaking my hand. And in a minute, <laughs> the lead mule started. Soon they were all strung out on that long, swaying bridge. Quinn stayed till last, spacing them out. I waved to him and waited for him to step out on the bridge. My hand inched toward the plunger. But then the stupid fool started back toward me. <laughs> Go on, Quinn. Hurry. There's no time. I can catch up with him. Listen, I've been thinking, Morton. Sunday, while you were in town, I looked around for that road. I couldn't find it's it. there all right. You'll find it. Hurry, Quinn. Maybe so. But I was just thinking. Why'd you plant the dynamite under this end of the bridge? Well, I... Why couldn't you have strung wires and blown it out from the other side? I just didn't. I made a mistake. All right. I'll take the consequences. You can still do it, Morton. We've got plenty of wire. No need for you to fall into El Chico's hands. Go on, you fool. Go on. In a minute, it'll be too late. Too late for what, Morton? Look at that dust. He's coming. You know what I think? I think El Chico isn't anywhere within 500 miles of here. What? I think you plan to blow up this bridge with the men on it. Drop us all at the bottom where you could pick up the pieces. Get away, Quinn. You can't stop me now. I'll take care of you later. Get away from that project. Stop it. Morton, get your hand off that. Stop it. No. <laughs> Concussion had my head reeling for a few seconds. When the landscape swam back into focus, I could see the bridge was gone. The bridge and the men and the mules. But I, I couldn't seem to figure out what happened. Quinn lay beside me, very still. I could see blood. 
how did... I seem to remember hearing a shot. But where did it come from? Charlie! Senor Charlie! Lolita! You did it! You shot him! You're wonderful! We did it, baby! We did it! Look at down there! A half a million bucks, baby! Three million pesos in gold! And all we gotta do is go down and pick it up! <laughs> indeed a good job, senor. <laughs> Dead stupidly at the little man in the big sombrero who stepped out of the manzanita and grinned at me. A smoking revolver dangled from one hairy paw, and the other. The other was pulling Lolita toward him. My Lolita. She put her arms around him and kissed him in a way that she never kissed me. We will pick up your gold for you, senor. You are a very smart man, senor Charlie. I should like to be your friend. Except you are gringo. And you mistake to make the love to the sweetheart of El Chico. Thank you, Bert Lancaster, for a splendid performance. Mr. Lancaster will return in just a moment. Uh, Doc, Doc, uh, what do you do for an acute case of goose pimples, huh? <laughs> well, if I knew, I'd prescribe some for myself. What you both need are some cool, calm, carefree autolite words from Frank Martin. Now, Mary, can't a couple of old jalopy men talk about spark plugs? <laughs> Everybody's talking about autolite resistor spark plugs. Why, they're the best thing that's happened in spark plugs for years. Replace your narrow-gap spark plugs with the sensational new wide-gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. You can actually tell the difference in your car. You'll enjoy immediate improvement like smoother idling and gas saving. Buy a set of Autolite resistor spark plugs tomorrow. So remember, Autolite means spark plugs. Ignition-engineered resistor spark plugs. Autolite means batteries. Stay full batteries. Autolite means ignition system. The lifeline of your car. Yes, and Autolite also makes in its 26 nationwide plants more than 400 automotive, aviation, and marine products famous the world over for engineered dependability. And now here again is Mr. Burt Lancaster. My thanks to the fine cast of radio actors who appeared on tonight's show. Suspense is always one of my favorite programs, whether I'm acting on it or listening to it. And you can be sure that I'll be glued to my radio next Thursday evening when Gregory Peck appears in a story called Hitchhike Poker. Another gripping study in... Suspense. Bert Lancaster will soon be seen in the Norma production, Kiss the Blood Off My Hands. Tonight's suspense play was written by Brett Holliday and adapted for radio by Lawrence Goldman with music composed by Lucian Marowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. In the coming weeks, Suspense will present such stars as Robert Young, Virginia Bruce, Edward G. Robinson, Ray Milan, and many others. And of special note, our star tonight, Burt Lancaster, may currently be seen in the film version of Sorry, Wrong Number, that great suspense play soon to be repeated on this program with Agnes Moorhead in her original role. Make it a point to listen each Thursday to Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. And next Thursday, same time, hear Gregory Peck in Hitchhike Poker. This is the Autolite Suspense Show. Drive slowly. Death and danger travel in fast company. Good night. Switch to Autolite. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>